The Underworld movie series has been quite successful over the years, having as many as five movies and one anime series. Today we're going to focus on a character that has been created for the 2006 movie Underworld Evolution. We're talking about Marcus Corvinus, one of the most powerful vampires in the Underworld saga. And what are his origins and story? How far does his power go? And why is he awake after hundreds of years? We will see all this in minutes, so don't leave the screen. Before starting the video, I invite you to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. Without further ado, let's start with the video. Marcus was a human who later became a vampire. He was born around the year 500 AD, being one of the most powerful members of the Corvinus clan and being the progenitor of the entire vampire species. The origin of his transformation into a vampire stemmed from a bite from a rabbit bat, leading him to be the first vampire. On the other hand, his brother William turned into a werewolf, infecting a large proportion of the population. To fight off the emerging horde of werewolves, Marcus approached Victor, a dying warlord, to borrow his military genius, an army from him in exchange for immortality. Victor accepted his offer and became one of the vampires. Right away, they started the war against the werewolves, as they were definitely a threat to both the human and vampire populations. 800 years after those events, Victor led a group of death dealers to a Hungarian town that William had previously passed through. Instead of finding just William, they found an entire village of recently infected werewolves. Victor's army subdued and seriously wounded William in the aftermath of the battle. Marcus begged for his brother's life, but was betrayed by Amelia and Victor, who intended to put William away for all eternity. Victor believed that if any of the Corvinus brothers would die, the immortal bloodline would eventually disappear with them. But this was a lie told by Marcus. Victor finally locked William away from Marcus's reach. When the army of the Death Dealers became the first vampire, Coven, the chain was implemented. A system where only one elder ruled for a hundred years, while the other two would sleep in hibernation. Victor, with the help of Amelia and the Vampire Council, undermined Marcus's power at every turn, ensuring that he would never have the strength to free his brother from his captivity. Thus, Victor remained the true leader of the vampires, even going so far as to allow himself to be called the oldest and strongest of them. But now let's talk about how Marcus Corvinus resurfaces after being asleep. After Victor's death, Celine was an outcast in the vampire community. When Victor killed the werewolf who made Lucian's weapons, a scientist named Singe, his spilled blood found its way to Marcus's grave, which initiated his awakening process. In the events of the second movie, Craven tries to kill Marcus, but he's already fully awake and attacks Craven and his gang in order to drink their blood to regain strength and acquire their memories. In them, he sees how Selene kills Victor and the betrayal that Craven planned with the Lycans to gain power. Marcus makes up his mind to find Selene with the mission to drink her blood. As doing so, will get him access to her memories and thus the location of his brother's prison. She also possesses half of the key to William's prison. With his plan in mind, Marcus sought out Selene first, a vampire debt dealer. Marcus tells Selene about Victor's plan to keep Selene safe and by doing so, conceals the location of the prison from Marcus. Following this, Marcus attacks Selene, but he fails thanks to Michael Corvin, Selene's hybrid lover, who is also a distant relative of Marcus. Later on, Marcus learns from Andreas Tanis that the other half of the key is in the hands of Marcus's father, the very first immortal, Alexander Corvinus, who had retrieved it from Victor's body. Before killing Tanis and traveling to St. Helena to retrieve Victor's key, there, Marcus manages to kill Michael and then drink Selene's blood, learning the location of his brother's prison. Marcus then confronts his father and mocks his feelings about the world, belonging to the human race, accusing him of rejecting his own children by staying on the sidelines while William was incarcerated. Then he reveals his true plan to create a new race, one in his own image. He seeks to replace his failed race of vampires who have followed Victor more than himself with that of vampire lichen hybrids. Marcus then seriously injures his father and retrieves the other half of the key. Traveling to the old fortress, Marcus proceeds to free William from his sarcophagus-like prison. Their bond is so strong that even the crazed William recognizes Marcus and refuses to harm him. They are soon interrupted by Selene and the survivors from her father's company, 
the soldiers known as the Cleaners, an organization that keeps secret everything about the war of the vampires and lichens from the humans. Marcus fights Selene and is enraged when a resurrected Michael fights and kills William. Marcus drives a claw through Selene, who survives due to her previously drinking Alexander's blood. However, Marcus is distracted by the death of his twin at the hands of Michael and is racked with shock and grief. These emotions cause him to be temporarily stunned and off guard, allowing Selene to counterattack Marcus. She, in a cunning moment, breaks the tip of one of Marcus's claws and impales his head with it before pushing him back against the still spinning blades of a crashed helicopter, slicing him to pieces and killing him. This film culminates by suggesting a continuation of the story for the future, in which Selene and Michael prepare to organize and unite the two races, vampires and lichens, and form a new era for the immortals where light prevails over darkness. The appearance of Marcus Corvinus is not only limited to the second part of Underworld, for the reason that the first vampire also has an appearance in the novel Blood Enemy. In this non-canonical novel, he has a son named Nicolae, whom Marcus considers a huge disappointment. He and Nicolae argue consistently, and Marcus is disgusted by his son's hedonistic personality. In an effort to control Nicolae's behavior, Marcus and Victor arrange a marriage between their two children, Nicolae and Sonia. This makes Sonia so upset that she admits her pregnancy by the lichen slave Lucian and attempts to run away with him, leading to her execution at the hands of Victor. In this novel, the relationship between Victor and Marcus does not seem to be strained. Marcus speaks kindly to Victor when he informs him that his wife had recently been killed in a deadly attack. Another notable change is Marcus's appearance. While his character in Evolution has a red beard and hair, in Blood Enemy, he is described as clean-shaven with black hair. This is because Blood Enemy was written before the production of Underworld Evolution. Powers and Abilities Since we are talking about one of the most powerful and important vampires in the Underworld saga, and also one of the strongest ones due to his age, his powers were superior to those of the rest of his kind, including those of even Victor and Amelia. He was also a skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant and likely well-versed in the use of weapons, at least medieval-type ones such as swords, as he is seen using one to attack his father. He boasts great superhuman strength, having been affected by the bat's rage. As the first of his kind, Marcus possessed physical strength that surpasses that of any other vampire. After his transformation into a hybrid, his formidable strength was further enhanced, as shown when he lifts a massive solid stone door to reach William. Although with great difficulty, he also pulls down a helicopter out of the air using his bare hands and defeats other hybrids like Michael on several occasions. Also his powers were superior to the rest of his kind. When Marcus became a hybrid, his Corvina strain greatly enhanced his already formidable powers and granted him the ability to transform at will into a humanoid bat-like creature. He had enough control over his transformation that he could turn only one of his hands into a claw, as well as summon his wings, and presumably could change other parts of his body and could even speak while he was transformed. Boasting great stamina like all vampires, Marcus was able to withstand multiple injuries, including being partially crushed by a small truck being shot multiple times at close range, one of his hands being destroyed by a helicopter blade, one of the claws of his wings broke and he was stabbed through the brain by said claw. Marcus is only killed when Selene pushes him into the very blades of the helicopter, thus tearing his body apart. His speed is incredible, and his senses are ultra-developed, as he has the genes of a bat, but in human form and increased due to his vampire factor. And like a bat, he has the ability to fly. Marcus developed a pair of bat wings that can be unfolded and retracted from his back, his wingtips were also extremely sharp and could be used as weapons to impale, hook, or slash his opponents. Another incredible ability that Marcus gained is that he could read memories just by drinking the blood of his victims. And it could also be said that he can become immortal, having inherited the Corvinus strain from his father, Alexander Corvinus, and being the first true vampire, and subsequently a dominant vampire hybrid. Marcus was immune to aging and disease, and had lived for thousands of years, having been over 1,600 years old. As for his personality, Marcus's relationship with his twin brother, William, defines a lot of the way he is. When separated, the twins could sense each other's presence when they got very close. 
As such, each of them shared a strong bond of loyalty with each other, closer than anyone else, even other members of their family. After William was bitten, Marcus's motivations for capturing his brother were both to protect William and any of his future victims, and to alleviate the survivor's intense guilt over him. While Marcus couldn't deny that his brother posed an enormous threat to both humans and vampires, he held firm to the illusion that he could draw his brother out of his bloodlust. Marcus was so sure of this that he truly believed that he and William could rule the vampire coven together, something that was illogical but blinded by love for his brother. He kept insisting on this point even at the end, witnessing the death of his brother. You can see how he acts as if he were the dead man, becoming weak until he dies at the hands of Selene. In the end, Marcus's personality was based on revenge and a deep madness for wanting to do pointless endeavors, and even almost putting the world in danger for those desires which ended up leading to his death. While Marcus was once sympathetic to the plight of the human and vampire races at the mercy of the scores of the werewolf's packs roaming the countryside, the eight centuries spent wallowing in his hatred for Victor and Amelia left Marcus so wound up in his thirst for vengeance and eventual madness that he no longer had any empathy for the suffering of others, particularly when they stand in the way of his goals. By the time of his death, Marcus can be seen as a violent and narcissistic psychopath.